What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and exactly one week after releasing beta 2, Apple returns today with iOS 13.4 beta 3. Now we also got updates for iPadOS, watchOS, macOS, and tvOS. But in this video, of course, we're gonna be talking mainly about what's new in iOS 13.4 beta 3, all the bugs, the bug fixes, as well as how the performance and the battery life have been on beta 2. And we're also gonna discuss anything new in iPadOS and also watchOS 6.2 beta 3 near the end of this video. And for those of you on the public beta program, you guys should be seeing these updates soon as well. I will update the description when it is released for you guys. So let's go ahead and dive into iOS 13.4 beta 3. So you can see here the update came in at about 336 megabytes here on my iPhone 11 Pro, of course coming from beta 2. This was a little bit smaller on iPad OS, it was about 282 megabytes on my iPad Pro right here. So just as usual, the size of these updates are continuing to decrease in size because of course we're on the third beta now and there's less and less that's added to the software. It's more about stability and fixing up some of those bugs. So anyways, let's go ahead and check out the build number and the modem firmware number here for beta three. So 13.4, you can see there the build number for this beta is 17E. 5241D. And we do have a D at the end of the build number there, which does indicate that we're getting close to the final build. We're not there just yet. We don't have an A just yet. So we probably will see at least two more betas, I would guess, of this before we see the final release, which could be at the March event at the end of March. So taking a look at the modem firmware here, you can see we went from 1.05.25 to 1.05.28. So it was a small update but this could fix any kind of LTE issues or connectivity issues that you may have been running into on previous versions of iOS. So now let's talk about some of the changes here. So if we go into the Photos application and go to the Photos tab right here, you'll actually be able to slide between all of these options down here, like the years, months, days, and all photos. You can actually slide that now to go to one of these things right here, as you can see. So you could not do that on previous versions of iOS. You would basically just have to tap on that and this is a very small change, but it is something that has been noticed. And if we go into our settings and go to wallpapers and then go to choose new wallpaper and then go to our stills, you will see that the icon there for the wallpaper, the little icon there is in the middle now, instead of being off to the right. So before the icon would be over to the right. And now just a small change in iOS 13.4 brings that to the center. Also, if you have the AirPods or the AirPods Pro, there's something new you can do inside of the settings for the AirPods. If you go to Bluetooth right here and then click on the I, down at the bottom you can see you have disconnect and forget these AirPods. You can now disconnect and forget from this menu right here. Whereas before you would have to disconnect them or you would have to close the case like this and then you'd be able to disconnect or forget by just tapping on the I right there. So this makes it a little bit easier to disconnect and forget your AirPods. Also inside of the TV application, you can see we have a lot of new options for things that you can do in here as far as download options, streaming options, and you can basically just change a lot of settings for the TV application, which is great if you use Apple TV. Now also in beta two, we got additional details on car key, which if you guys did not catch my video, my past two videos really on iOS 13.4, car key is going to allow you to basically unlock your car if it has NFC built into it. So now there is additional info found in the API in beta two, which showed that you can actually share your keys via messages. So you can basically send a key to your car to a friend and it could be either temporary or possibly permanent. We don't know all these specifics just yet, but it's very cool that you're gonna be able to use your phone as a key to your car and start your car and things like that. And the fact that you could send it to other people. So we could be seeing this actually coming with 13.4 at the end of March. So I will keep you guys updated on car key because I think this is really cool and probably the best feature in 13.4. And speaking of the code, 9 to 5 Mac just discovered references to a new over the air recovery feature possibly coming with 13.4. So this is in the code of 13.4 beta three. So it appears that we may soon be able to restore an iOS device over the air without needing to plug it into a computer or anything like that. And it appears that you may also be able to restore an iOS device by plugging it in to another iOS device. So if you have like two iPhones, you can plug one into the other using, I guess, a USB-C to USB or USB-C to USB-C and be able to restore that way. So 
this will be big. This is going to be a big feature, and I really hope we see that when 13.4 drops next month. I will be making a tutorial on how that works as well. Now, as far as the mail application, it seems that Apple is done tweaking this for now, at least the bottom toolbar right here. I did not notice anything new in the toolbar or in mail in general. I also noticed that I got a lot less mail bug comments on my previous videos and on social media and things like that. I see a lot less people talking about bugs with the mail application. So it seems, and I at least assume, that most of the mail bugs have been patched by now. But if you are still having mail issues, of course, let me know down in the comment section below so I can address them here on the channel. But for me personally, mail is working perfectly fine and iOS 13.4, I feel like definitely did improve upon iOS 13.3.1 because I've noticed that it's just a lot better in general and I do like the additional change to the toolbar down here as well. Now, as far as bugs go, one of the biggest bugs in 13.4 beta one was the notifications overlapping inside of your notification center here on the lock screen and just in your today view. So that was fixed for most people in beta two, but I did get the screenshot here from somebody on beta two. I got this over on Twitter that shows that notifications are still being overlapped in beta two. Now I did not have this issue myself in beta two, so I assume it's just you know a rare case of some people still having this issue, but I would assume that beta three does fully fix the notification overlapping issue. So let me know if it's fixed for you down below. Now, as far as the Instagram audio bug, this is still persisting here on beta three. Unfortunately, I did test it out and I got it quite quickly. So basically this bug is just when you play a video and you go out of the application and the audio still continues to play from that video or you go into another application and the audio continues to play it's very annoying and it's still happening now one issue i have not had but i've seen people on forums talk about is that for some people when you're connected to carplay your phone will not ring so you will not hear the ring from your phone on your apple watch or on your carplay interface so i've not had this my calls come through perfectly fine on carplay i have had issues with ways and a couple of other things on 13.4 beta when it comes to CarPlay, but nothing like that. So if you guys have CarPlay, let me know if you're facing that issue as well. Now, as far as the text message notification bug, this is still present. I know a lot of people have been asking me about this just because I have not mentioned it in my last few videos, but that's because it hasn't been addressed yet. And I don't wanna talk about it in every single video, but this is still here. And I've actually seen a growing number of people talk about this with these 13.4 beta. So basically it's when you are on the lock screen and you get a notification, you get a text message, I should say, and you don't get any kind of notification. You don't get a vibration. You don't get your phone lighting up, showing you have a notification. You don't get any sounds. You don't get anything on your Apple Watch. If your Apple Watch is connected, you don't get anything. So basically there's been a lot of times where I just respond really late to a text message or I'm constantly tapping my phone to see if I have a text message because of this bug. So it's very annoying and I really hope Apple addresses this sooner than later. And I did also have an issue with iCloud messages not syncing and also contacts reverting back to an old name. So I would name contacts, you know, I would change the name of certain people inside of my contacts. Maybe there's a different emoji or something like that. And it would just randomly revert back to an old name that I had like in 13.3.1 or something like that. So it was really weird and that only happened in beta two. So hopefully this beta fixes that. I will let you know next week if that happens again. And another thing that I noticed here in beta three that was not here in any previous beta is that if you go to settings general about, take a look at that, it just kind of hangs there for a couple of seconds, maybe like a second or two, it hangs. So let's go ahead and do that again. You can see there, it just takes a little bit and it did not do that in any of the previous betas of 13.4. So that's pretty annoying and it does make your phone feel a little bit slower. This is on the iPhone 11 Pro, so it's probably even slower on other phones, on older phones. So hopefully Apple does fix that as well. Now, as far as performance and battery life goes, I don't wanna talk about this for too long because it's exactly the same for me on beta two, at least beta two was compared to beta one. If anything, I think the battery life may have improved by like a couple of minutes, but really nothing noticeable at all, unless you're doing in-depth testing like I am. But as far as performance, performance seems about the same on beta two as it was on beta one. But for beta three, like I said, that issue inside of settings, when you go to about, it just kind of hangs there for a second. That does feel like it's a little bit slower than beta two. But overall, I haven't noticed anything that would indicate that anywhere else on the OS is slower than beta two. It's probably gonna be pretty much exactly the same. I mean, these betas are gonna continue being released just to fix like minor bugs and some security enhancements and things like that. You're really not gonna see anything changing with performance or battery life until maybe the final release, if not the next version of iOS, the first beta of that next version of iOS. We also got watchOS 6.2 beta three today. And you can see here, the size came in around 150 megabytes on my Apple Watch series five. Now I do not normally install 
watchOS beta updates, since they do tend to be more buggy than the iOS updates. But I know some of you guys at least wanted me to acknowledge the Apple Watch beta updates in these videos, so here we are. So watchOS 6.2 is gonna bring support for in-app purchases, which is gonna be handy for those of you who want to use your watch without depending on your iPhone when it comes to in-app purchases. Now we could also see the watch getting car key, which would be awesome, and that would allow you to basically unlock your car by just putting your watch up to it and of course using NFC. So if that actually happens with 13.4 and watchOS 6.2, that will be epic. And I will definitely be showing you guys how that works in a video. But as far as beta three specifically, it doesn't bring anything new to the table aside from bug fixes and security enhancements. Of course, as you could tell by the small size of this update. Now with beta two, a lot of users with the Apple Watch Series 5 specifically had battery drain issues. So I will be testing beta three over the next week or so and give you guys an update on that next week as far as if the battery's draining and the performance and things like that. So yeah, I'm just now starting to update my Apple Watch to these beta so I will be going a little bit more in depth with the coverage on watchOS betas with time as I continue to install these betas on my Apple Watch here. So just be on the lookout for those in the future. So yeah, that's iOS 13.4 beta three. As far as iPadOS goes, there's nothing new specific to iPadOS. Everything on iOS is the same as on iPadOS. Of course, I do check those out as well. And I will let you guys know if anything exclusive to the iPad is new in these beta updates as well. But overall, pretty small update, pretty minor update, really not gonna notice too much different from beta two. But of course, if you are on beta two, I would highly recommend updating to beta three because as these betas progress, you are gonna be starting to notice a more stable release and you're gonna have a lot less bugs with some additional features as well. So let me know what you guys think about iOS 13.4, both beta two and beta three. How was beta two for you? Did you install beta three? How's it running for you? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. You guys know I do like to respond to your comments down there. And I also mention you guys in future videos as well. So if you guys you know, point out a bug and a lot of people like it, I will probably include that in my next video just to see how many people are having it and you know to bring it to Apple's attention and also report it myself. So yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up and of course subscribe for the next beta release video. So thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you soon.